Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Today, we are going to be making a couple quick and dirty chlorate cells out of some old uh, mason jars here with some fancy new plastic Walmart lids. Now, potassium chlorate, super useful in chemistry for generating oxygen. Uh, lesser so in, in rocketry, well, not really used at all in rocketry. It's, it's far too uh, reactive. Uh, used a little bit in pyrotechnics, but it's it's pretty dangerous stuff. It's uh, a lot more prone to blowing people's fingers off than it is to really uh, usefulness in pyrotechnics, aside from some certain colored star formulations. But it is uh, it's something everybody, <laughs> I guarantee, has in their house. If you have a box of safety matches or a, a little card of safety matches, you have potassium chloride in your house. The... Uh, the little match heads are some sort of mix of uh, potassium chlorate and a binder and I'm not sure what else is in there. Some kind of fuel source, probably sawdust. <laughs> um, and when you strike that against the, the striker, that is red phosphorus. Potassium chlorate and red phosphorus do not mix. It creates a, a very, very sensitive mixture and that's why it self-ignites. So, basic things you'll need to make a chlorate cell <laughs> in summary since I've been rambling for a while. 5 volt power supply, some sort of uh, suitable jar with a preferably non-conductive lid unless you want to make it a little more complicated on yourself, mixed metal oxide, platinum, platinized titanium, or graphite anodes, in this case we're going to be using MMO, expanded titanium mesh, and potassium chloride. You could also start with basically any other chloride salt, uh, just not ammonium chloride because that is not stable. This potassium chloride I got as uh, softener salt. Sodium free softener salt. It's just potassium chloride. Works great. Well, all I have is a, <laughs> a diamond blade. My other uh, little saw blade actually broke on me. This is about as unoptimal for cutting through plastic as you can get. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That worked though. Did a fine job. I want a little overkill over there. Epoxy. Yeah, for being the totally wrong kind of blade, that actually worked pretty damn well. Beautiful. All right. Oh, that's fun. Just going to use a little emery cloth to uh, roughen up the plastic. We get better adhesion of the epoxy. So to hold the electrodes in place while I get ready to glue them up, I just cut off a couple little pieces of, uh, this is just super cheap titanium sheet, uh, got off eBay. It's actually real titanium, I spark tested it, it's at least somewhat pure titanium. I just cut off a couple little strips here and I'm using that to hold these nice and center. So I was planning on using JB Weld to, to fill this gap, but uh, I remember JB Weld does have steel in it like powdered steel, I believe, added to the resin. Odds are eventually that would be eaten through the, the top layer of resin because this is a nasty corrosive environment. And then you get steel or iron contamination in your cell. Instead of doing that, what I'm gonna do is use some of this uh, cheap DevCon five minute epoxy. And I'm gonna add some fume silica to it just to thicken it up. So one, it doesn't go through there. And two, this is essentially uh, very lightweight glass, so it should act as a pretty uh, resistant additive for the uh, harsh environment that it's going to be in. Fume silica is used as an epoxy thickener all the time in marine applications. Uh, me and my buddy were rebuilding his boat and uh, had to cut through quite a bit of old fiberglass and, and repair it. We used cabasil like crazy because it's, it's a great filler and it makes a very resilient epoxy. Probably should have gone ahead and mixed the epoxy beforehand, but it appears to be all right. All right, that's properly thick. She's about as ugly as they come, but <laughs> it'll work. Unfortunately, I lost my footage, but you can see I also installed a quarter inch hose barb adapter in the lid here and just epoxied that in. While I'm waiting for the epoxy to set up, I'm going to prepare a uh, saturated solution of potassium chloride. Alright, so I just put a little bit of salt water in the cell 
and I'm just running the switching these back and forth a few times running each one as the anode cathode vice versa uh, for a little while because these are used anodes so they had some sort of crusty shit on them and I couldn't get it off with water or anything so I figured run it for a little while maybe a couple hours on each and uh, you can see all the crud that came off quite a bit of stuff at the bottom and you can see we're generating a pretty good volume of gas here as well just a little soapy water good bit of fun that's oh, pretty quiet there we go so let the cell run for a while I've now emptied out the dilute salt solution the, the electrodes look pretty clean they uh, still have a little bit of a red haze to them I'm not sure what exactly they were used for previously but we will now fill this with the fully saturated solution of potassium chloride which I've just put in this old windshield fluid windshield washer fluid jug that I rinsed out a few times with DI water I'm gonna hook this up to my exterior line I literally drilled a hole in the side of the house for this video so <laughs> please consider donating on patreon <laughs> instead of running it off the uh, the big power supply, the lab power supply that I have over here, I'm going to be running it off this little computer power supply. But this is very efficient. The uh, the PC power supplies are quite efficient. The old lab power supply I have, the Sorensen, uh, basically just to have this thing running, it uses about 60 to 70 watts. And this is passively cooled, so this sucker heats up quite a bit kind of worries me to leave that running for a long time whereas a computer power supply super efficient will run forever no problems and since we have five volts it's perfect oh, holy shit this thing's drawing some current let me use a meter and check that real quick got the uh the dave jones approved oh thank god the heater's off the uh dave jones approved anning a name, a new, whatever, uh, AN 8008. Pretty good, good little meter. Hey, look at that. 6.7, it's raising a little bit, but yeah, right in the neighborhood of uh, 7 amps. So 5 volts, 35 watts. Not bad. So I'm going to leave this sucker run for a uh, probably at least a couple days, maybe longer. But when I come back, we should have a nice crop of chlorate crystals. I'll of course check on it. Now there are ways to optimize performance here. We're, we're just going for a simple batch and toss method. There, there's ways to drastically improve performance by constantly monitoring the pH of the solution, keeping that, I forget the exact range it's supposed to be in, but I know there's a correct pH range for optimal chlorate production. There's a certain temperature that is optimal, a certain current density that's optimal. There, there's a lot that goes into this on an industrial scale to maximize efficiency. Here, we're not so worried about that. The cool thing is once you get your first batch done and you harvest your, your potassium chlorate, you recycle the liquor and add more uh, potassium chloride to it. And then it, it proceeds much faster because you already have a pretty concentrated solution with quite a bit of chlorate and uh, hypochlorites in there. Well, here we are about 24 hours into the run. After a few hours, I switched away from the PC power supply. It, it was just putting out too much current, really heating up the cell. So I went to the lab power supply, which <laughs> the power supply itself started to seem kind of overheating. So I have it set up with a fan going <laughs> over it. It's a very old power supply, so there's uh, probably some components in there that are prone to heating up a bit. Good news is, we have quite a bit of potassium chlorate formation already. Bad news is, there's quite a bit growing on the cathode. I'm trying to get a good shot here through the mason jar, which is not super easy. Ooh, wide mouth. We all love one of those. 
Yeah, it's not showing up super well. There's some really nice structured crystals in there though. You helping out? You helping make some chlorate? <laughs> what a good boy. <laughs> All right, so at this point we have been running for about four days. So as you can see, we have a really nice crop of chlorate crystals. The, the thing is the cell voltage, I can see on the power supply here, started out at four volts and it's slowly starting to rise in the past day. So if the chloride concentration drops too much, you can actually destroy your anodes. Mixed metal oxide anodes hold up really well when the chloride concentrations are high. But if you let those drop, so if you if you don't keep adding chloride to the cell, it will destroy your your precious anode. So what I'm going to do is harvest the crystals out of here, recycle the liquor and top it off with fresh chloride. So I'll uh, I'll heat up the liquor, dissolve some more chloride in there and make sure we have a uh, a high concentration of chloride ions to keep our anode happy. And you can just keep recycling this on and on and it'll jump start the reaction really nicely because you already have a solution very high in chlorates and hypochlorites so uh, let's get to harvesting so just got set up for vacuum filtration got the Bunchner funnel or Buckner funnel forget how to pronounce it and some filter paper get that nice and wet make sure I don't rip the paper on the pool. Make sure you wear shitty clothes when you're doing this, because uh, <laughs> this stuff is basically a bleach solution with a bunch of chlorate crystals in it, so it'll bleach the hell out of your clothes if it gets on there. Yeah, look at all those beautiful crystals. Spiritual healing crystals. <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> That's a bit. Holy hell. Lost a little bit to the cutting mat. Oh my god, and there's still quite a lot more. All right, she's been drying for a little while now. <laughs> That's quite a bit of chlorate. Now, I'm not sure why, but my filter paper is turning a bit of an odd color. It did it with the, uh, the first piece, too, before it broke through. And I'm not sure if that is just the effect of the hypochlorate on the paper. Or maybe some very small trace amount of contaminants from the the crust that was on the anodes. But the crystals themselves are beautiful, pure white crystals. And still got a little bit more to filter here. And cue the half a million Breaking Bad Heisenberg comments. <laughs> there we have it, guys. A pretty fair amount of very pure looking potassium chlorate. I'm sure there's still a bit of hypochlorite in there but that'll actually decompose as it dries out. To ensure so I'm actually going to put it in the oven probably right around 220 just to totally dry it out and destroy any hypochlorite that might be in there. Don't tell my wife and don't repeat this but <laughs> I I don't have an oven in the lab, so I had to resort to using the toaster oven. I, you know, covered the top up so no uh, crystals pop out or contaminate anything. It, yeah, shouldn't be a problem. Oh, also a note, look at how off the oven is from the actual temperature. I got this thing set to about 350, and it's hovering between 275, 290. So, <laughs> that shows you how well Oster calibrates their equipment. <laughs> And this thing's only, you know, a year, year and a half old. It's not like it's uh, out of date. It's like a damn blind archery competition. Heading in the right direction, but uh, <laughs> missing the mark. Out of the oven, and there we have it, guys. A beautiful crop of chlorate crystals. 
quite a bit as well. I got some pretty cool plans for this stuff in the future. Uh, obviously the normal experiments I want to try doing an oxygen generator and you know the screaming gummy bear that sort of stuff but I also want to try uh, thermally decomposing this into perchlorate uh, has to be very very pure so we'll have to run a recrystallization and, and try that but uh, I want to try making perchlorate out of this and then doing a double displacement to get ammonium perchlorate in, in that sense we would kind of have a way of making uh, the main oxidizer for our composite propellants from scratch which would be pretty cool so thank you so much for watching guys I hope you really enjoyed if you like the channel enough please consider donating on patreon it helps out so much more than you can imagine and and I really need your support to keep this channel going thank you so much to all my existing patrons out there I couldn't do it without you guys please don't forget to thumbs up subscribe Click that little dingleberry next to subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Have a great one.